Hello, 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 hello. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Wherever you are and whatever you are doing, this is Dr. Luther Smith, and you are watching The Urban Influence, um, a show uh, where we look at uh, various topics and various people with various interests and uh, those who are influencing the culture, right? And uh, here I have with me today a wonderful, a special guest, as a matter of fact, um, and hopefully maybe two later on, um, a gentleman by the name of Mark Sargent. Mark, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well, and thank you for having me. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. You are, you are in, uh, uh, we are talking about the issue of flat earth, but more than that, we're right. going to uh, kind of look into your life and who you are. Sure. But uh, um, talking about flat earth theory, this guy is, I think uh, in, in the documentary, uh, you said, I, I wasn't the one that started it. I'm just the one that uh, saw the door open and pointed to everybody. Right, 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 right. So he is uh he has a YouTube uh channel uh called Mark Sargent on YouTube. Indeed. And um he has uh I, I believe over a thousand videos. I think fourteen hundred. Uh yeah, actually I think I'm up to like fifteen hundred at this point. Okay, very That's cool. A lot. Very cool. <laughs> and uh the partner who may be joining us later on, I'll go ahead and introduce uh her just in case she joins in, is uh a woman by the name of Patricia Steer. She is uh she has a YouTube uh video or uh, YouTube channel, I'm sorry called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I want to ask her what other hot potatoes are there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other the other topics. It's weird because that name has been parodied so many times now. Uh, she was just talking about Flat Earth and, and other conspiracies. But she didn't like the word conspiracies. So that was the, the closest thing she came up with. It's like hot potatoes. Right, right, like, right. Okay. Right. Well, it works. Yeah, if everybody's tossing it around. And stuff. Yep. It's like, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into uh, 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 just the the interview. You you actually uh, you and Patricia actually mm -hmm. did a documentary called Behind the Curve, right? Right, and uh, tell me uh, uh, your your experience um, with the camera crew and some of the people that you were working with. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure, sure, sure. They first it was so it was Delta V Productions out of Los Angeles, and they first approached me in April of 2017, when I just gotten back from Canada, I, I had spent a year up there. And they said, Hey, we're, we're thinking about to, to turn this thing. I mean, look, film students are a dime a dozen, right? If you're in Los Angeles, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's laws in place in Los Angeles, uh, to keep film students off the street from shooting things like documentaries. And so uh, I, we, we talked and I said, yeah, I, I think it'd be a great idea. And so we started up in Seattle and shot there. And then I introduced them to just about any, everyone I could, I could think of that, you know, cause it was, you can only put so many people in this. And so I put them in contact with Bob from Globusters and Jaronism and Patricia Steer, uh, and Chris Pontius, uh, Nathan Thompson, they found on their own cause he's, he was down in the LA area and for over the next seven months, we shot with them in various locations. I turned out to be the protagonist in the movie. So I got to go out to, you know, the eclipse in Salem, Oregon and got down to, to see Patricia in uh, uh, Houston and go down to an LA meetup and went to NASA space center and the, the, the conference in Raleigh. And even though this was a shoestring budget, I mean, this was a really, you know, we were running on fumes. I mean, the, when you when when a documentary team has to use multiple credit cards to make a movie, you know that it's that it's you know they're they're barely getting this thing off. Yeah. And even then, I mean, anyone in the industry will tell you the odds of a documentary doing anything are slim to none. I mean, less than one percent chance. And and I'll give you the odds on that. Meaning, after we were done shooting, then they started pitching it to if you haven't sold it right away which they didn't even bother trying to sell it right away as far as I know. It's like, okay, we'll, we'll go into the film festivals. And so you start applying to film festivals. And by that, I mean, you apply. Uh, like the Toronto Film Festival, where this thing premiered uh, back in April of last year, there were 3,000 submissions to, the, to that festival, out of which they only chose 100. Oh, wow. And out of those, we made the, the top 10 like must watch. And that just kept happening again and again and again to where we did uh, 22 film festivals in seven countries. Oh, wow. Which, which was bl bl mind blowing considering yeah. the topic is like yeah. really. And, and then just uh, and they thought, OK, well, even though it's in film festivals, that's a whole nother layer. It's kind of like going from high school to college and college to the pros you still it's like well it's never going to sell and most of the time they don't you most of the film festival films do not sell mm -hmm. they said well it's never going to sell and it sold 
uh, iTunes picked it up and Amazon and uh, YouTube and Google Play. And then that was in November. And then just a couple, uh, two, two and a half weeks ago, that's when Netflix picked it up. Uh-huh. And then, then again, I, okay. I completely underestimated their market share. I just, everything exploded after that. Cause I didn't realize that everybody had Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. And, everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has Netflix. I don't. Even, even you, and you don't even know that yet. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. So it was, so that was, yeah. And then everything just went crazy. And that's so. Cool. My email load doubled and all of a sudden I'm asking to do speaking engagements in places that have nothing to do with flat earth conferences. And so, Hey, fantastic. Great. Wonderful. Very cool. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, when you are, um, oh, actually I'll, I'll ask this. So, so your personal opinions on, on the documentary behind the curve, do you right. think that they were, was it, did you feel like it was a, a, a fair assessment of your of your perspective? It was a fair snapshot of what Flat Earth was like two years ago in 2017. Because uh, remember, almost all of it, in fact, I think pretty much all of it was shot in 2017, from April all the way up until about the, uh, December was, was when it was shot. And yeah, it, it was in some senses. I mean, it showed, you know, people in the community doing what they do and, and conferences and meetups and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, but it was never going to be a flat earth propaganda film because the director, none of the people involved in the film were in terms of making it art were conspiracy people in the slightest. And, uh, several of them are very heavy science based. And so they initially went into this as a human interest piece which was, okay, forget about the nuts and bolts of Flat Earth. Let's just look at the people. They're fairly harmless and kooky and whatever. And then, and and I only knew this later. Uh, I always suspected, but I, I only knew this later because in the director's commentary on the iTunes version, the director said, uh, here was the, um, the turning point for us was when we went to the conference and the 12 year old kid went up, walked up to the microphone and, and started asking me questions. At that point for them, that, that was beyond the pale. I was like, okay, all right, enough fun and games. Mm -hmm. If the kids are involved, now we have we have a responsibility to make a stand, Mm -hmm. which I disagree with, and and which was like, look, really, because we're targeting children. That's what flat Earth does. Come on, we're we're not Joe Camel in a cigarette commercial. (laughs) We we don't have a special children's program. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's why they decided, but they had already finished the movie basically by that point in mm-hmm. terms of the, the shooting. So it's like, okay, we got to tweak it in editing. So they went after Bob, they went after Jaron, they took a couple shots at me, took a couple shots at Nathan and they did it. They, you know, finally, you know, it, if that wasn't the case, it should have ended with the conference. That's how it should have ended. You know, it should have been the, the big finale and that's where it ended, but nope, they had to, they had to throw the, the thing in at the end. And so was it a fair assessment? Yes. Was it skewed in the favor of science? Yes, it was. But what I predicted came true, which was uh, the flat earthers hated it, but everybody else would think it was so interesting that they were going to look into flat earth. And mm-hmm. Our, mm-hmm. Our, as a recruiting tool, it became a Trojan horse. Great. Great for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, 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 very cool. Yeah, I, 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 as a matter of fact, I was, uh, th- that's interesting that you say that because of that, I had watched that documentary and, uh, had became very fascinated yeah. uh, with it too. So, so that, that, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, so when you're not, uh, studying flat earth when you're not uh, going out and, uh, essentially conquering the world, what is right. it, uh, what are some of the hobbies that you guys, what, that you like to do? Wow. Uh, most of the time, I mean, my hobbies have been cut way, way back since this thing took over. L- l- let me tell you what I used to do before I got into flat earth. Uh, I used to be, I used to f- be a fairly quiet guy out in Colorado, uh, playing video games. Uh, I liked playing basketball. I windsurfed. Uh, I climbed mountains, uh, you know, in Colorado, you do a lot of mountains anyway. Um, I, you know, did just about anything everybody else would like to do, hang out with friends, you know, have some wine, kick back, uh, a pretty normal life for the most part. Then I got into flat earth and it became, I wouldn't say all consuming. You know, there's lots of people that are in flat earth that have lives that have jobs and, and do other things. But for me, because I, for whatever reason, I became the freshman recruiter. Uh, I just, it, it became more and more to where this is what I do 24 seven now. So very cool. Uh, Patricia says she will be here in 10 minutes. So she'll pick up where, wherever you Oh, can. Okay. So, so. That, that, that's fine. Well, we, okay. she, she can parachute in. That's cool. <laughs> Not like actually parachute in. I mean, that'd be kind of cool, but nice. nice. <laughs> so, um, um, 
what were some of the what were some of the things that you used to do uh, when you were young? I, I see that in the documentary uh, they interviewed your mom too as well. Yep. Um, so what was like? What was it like growing up in the sergeant house? Life growing up in the sergeant house uh, was different than most people because I grew up on a rural island up in the northwest corner of the United States. So, I mean, you know, you can see Canada literally, you know, you drive up the island just a little bit and you can see Canada from here. Uh, so it's not like being in Seattle. I grew up more or less in the Seattle area. My pe my parents were from the Seattle area. They both went to the University of Washington. And, uh, but but when they moved, it was interesting. They, they decided to raise their kids in an island, which is very tough to get in trouble on. I mean, you know, they roll up the sidewalks when the sun goes down and there's lots of roads that don't have street lights at all. Uh, you know, short of throwing rocks at cop cars, I, it would be tough to get in trouble here. It's really, but but it's very, very sheltered it, to that uh -huh. extent as well. So I grew up on a, on a beach. Uh, you know, there's tons and tons of beaches. A lot of people don't know. There's more beach uh, coastline in Washington state because all the nooks and crannies uh -huh. than all of, all of California. Uh -huh. Um which is amazing because uh, they're in California so big. But uh, so I, I windsurfed, I, I, you know, I fished, I did just about anything on the water that I could, but it was, it was pretty quiet and pretty sheltered. I didn't believe uh, I was, I was taught a lot of things that without any opposing views, you know, like Christianity, <laughs> that's the only religion you need to worry about. And uh, there are no conspiracies. That was the other thing, which is like, I, I literally, until I went to university, I did not know that people in authority would uh, have the potential of lying for a living, you know, or lying, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I did not believe in lies at a higher mm -hmm. level. I just mm -hmm. did because why, why would people lie to you? And so right. then I saw JFK. Anyway. Oh, so yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean, you figured like, you know, those who are in higher positions have, a, have a responsibility, an obligation, a duty integrity oh, yeah you, yeah why why would it yeah and so i didn't i didn't question any of that i literally believe that people there was no reason for people in authority to lie uh but you know i was naive that the, i was almost the very definition of naive you know coming off the island and then i had to catch up pretty quick sure. so sure. and then i did over the well, next 10 20 years very, very cool so uh how did you um you, you said you, you didn't, did you start, you didn't start off at Flat Earth, right? No, no, not at all. No, oh, flat. When, did you, when did you begin to start to, uh, to kind of question um, um, the, the global sphere of the Earth and start to get it and move into that? 2014 was when I got into it and it was out of sheer conspiracy boredom, for lack of a better term. Um, if you spend enough time in the internet and lots of people do, you know, you go down certain rabbit holes and I went down every rabbit hole you can think of, you know, just, just to see, I went down as objectively as I could. And I honestly can say, I have an opinion on every conspiracy you can think of. Some I like, some I don't like, and everybody that's into conspiracies knows about flat earth, but it's too ridiculous to even take seriously. So everyone just like gets out of here. You know, it's like a, like a dog nipping on your heels. It's like, get out of here. You know, you, you don't want to, you don't want to deal with it. And one day I said, all right, fine. I'm bored with everything else. I'll take a look at it. What's the worst that could happen? And I looked at it and I said, huh, that's still terrible. But I, there were certain wrinkles to it that I thought were very, very interesting. And I said, well, I can, you know, to, in order to formulate my eventual opinion, I'll just research it for a few days. I'll shut it down and I'll be like, yeah, okay, now I know. And I can tell people about it because, you know, I like my stances on certain things and I could not solve it. It was like a freaking puzzle box. I could not solve. And I worked on it for nine months. And then in 2015, beginning of 2015, I gave up and I said, okay, apparently I am not intelligent enough to solve this riddle. I am going to leave it up to the internet hive mind. And so I made a series of videos called flat earth clues, put them out there and said, come at me. What do you got? In fact, I, you know, was an idiot. Took out my phone number, my physical address. It's like, Eric, here, just call me. I didn't want people to email me. I was like, just call me. Tell me how, I'm, how I screwed this up and everything will be fine. I can go back to bed. And the opposite happened where people just started calling me and calling in, in ever increasing cycles to where uh, I had uh, people just out of the blue just calling me saying, man, this is really interesting. Tell me more. I had people from media calling me and saying, okay, this is really new for news. Let's talk about this. I'm going, it's not that new. 
And then finally, uh, the subject matter experts, people from that had an authoritative opinion on certain things regarding the curvature of the earth. They were calling me up and saying, you know what? This is just crazy enough. It might work. And yeah, here we are four years later. Go figure. So starting off with uh, basically just an interest and then like kind of an invested interest in yeah. the subject. And then, yeah. just, and then just studying it, researching it, you know, watching all the videos you can, doing all the research you can, and then yeah. trying to, uh, it, it, it sounds like you were trying to find ways in the beginning to refute it. Oh, everybody does. In fact, everybody in the Flat Earth community is still trying to find ways to refute it now. That's what makes Flat Earth different from any other conspiracy theory. Flat Earthers secretly, and I challenge any other Flat Earther to, to, to go against this, they want it to be disproven if possible. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how you start in. Everybody says flat earth is silly. I can debunk it. And that's the t-shirt. I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth mm -hmm. and to where you get frustrated. It's almost, and then it turns on you where it's like, okay, I'll do this experiment. Maybe this will show the curve. And, and you, every experiment you fail to show the curve, it reinforces it to where after a while you're going, yeah, it's not going to show a curve. We might as well do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where we ended up to where, uh, even now, uh, I would love if somebody came forward and said, hey, here's I've proven the curve without a shadow of the doubt. Everybody can re re reproduce this and everybody's on the same page. Be like, Fantastic. Great. Good night, everybody. Roll credits. Yeah. And yeah. Nope. Nope. Not now. So so speaking about the uh, the 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 arguments um, against Flat Earth, what are some of the common arguments that you've heard against them? The and common arguments. Well, there's good arguments and there's bad arguments. The the most common ones, uh, usually, because people go for the the obvious stuff. People always choose the easiest options first. Uh, the most the common one that people say, well, is there's there's images from space, and everybody leans on some sort of space program. I don't care if it's the Americans, the Japanese, or the Israeli, or the Russians, or whatever. They lean on a space program, and which is fine, except that we already tried that. That's what everybody does first. Everybody leans on the space program. Plus, you also got to remember. Uh, that N NASA didn't in invent the globe, right? The first image, actual blue marble shot that was taken of the Earth was in 1972 by NASA. Well, it's not like we woke up one day in 1972 and said, oh, <laughs> it's a globe. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. No, so, I, so I'll throw that at him and I say, okay, just take NASA and push it off to the side. Forget about all the space agencies and all this stuff because they're all military anyway. It's like, fine, if you have the utmost faith in everything that's military, good for you. It's, mm -hmm. it's not what I believe in. Uh, so how can you prove it's a globe without using a space program? And they'll, they'll bring up one of two arguments. The first one is the most obvious, which is, well, we see ships going over the horizon. I mean, that's what every kid knows. We've been taught this forever. It's in cartoons and movies. And, and you know, we, we've we always heard of this. I go, yeah, ships going on the horizon, right, where the ship goes away and, and you can barely see it and it's squeak and it's gone, right? And never is coming back. It's like, well, yeah, up until about 10 years ago, that was true. Now that's not true anymore. Now we have cameras with HD and optical or digital zoom, which is so good that now you can bring those boats back into frame. Mm -hmm. Now you can zoom in and the boat's there again. It's like, well, mm -hmm. it should be gone. And then mm -hmm. you let it go off again and you crank it up more and the boat's gone. Well, mm -hmm. there's a problem there. And that is sooner or later, that boat has to be behind the curve. Mm -hmm. It has to be on the other side of the hill. It has mm -hmm. to be gone. And I mean, you can't see over the side of a hill. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And we, to, to where now we've even taken, we can always see them, always, to mm -hmm. where the only limit of how far we can see boats is the thickness of the atmosphere itself. Because remember, what we're breathing in here is a, like a thin version of water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only mostly transparent, and it gets thicker as it gets further out. It's kind of like looking at things underwater. Mm -hmm. And it, to where I've gone so far to say, you know, if you pulled the atmosphere off entirely and you were looking through a vacuum, I bet you could see almost forever, you mm -hmm. know, in, in that sense, which is could be why the atmosphere was put in, there in, in place and, you know, since day one. Right. You're talking um, about like a like a flat plane. Yeah. I mean, if, if the atmosphere wasn't there, I think you could see ridiculous differences. In fact, now that I, I, I didn't even think about it till just now, maybe that was the reason why the atmosphere was placed was to for app for visual distortion mm -hmm. uh, sort of like no different than um that subtle because the design features of this place are, are brilliant absolutely clever and brilliant and flawless uh like adding three percent salt to the oceans you know the oceans are only three percent salt and what that means is yeah marine life can can do just fine but human beings cannot drink it 
Mm -hmm. And that limits uh, ship exploration by 90 something percent, mm. which is amazing. So yeah. anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so so you uh, no, so you're 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 uh, the, one of the counter arguments is is that you see it from you can see the globe from space. Right. And 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 you're saying that, well, it's been basically uh you said the one the one that the shot that they've taken is in 73 that was the first oh 72 one. yeah the the first blue marble shot was taken in 72 and the second blue marble shot wasn't taken until 2015 mm. right after we started getting going and it's like that's a long people don't understand in space terms space technology terms that's forever mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's most of the 70s all of the 80s all of the 90s all of 2000 to 2010 and halfway to now uh and nobody took a second shot of the earth ever to come on that that's even even in hollywood uh standpoint that's that's a plot hole that just doesn't add up it's like what have you guys been doing this entire time and literally was just the same image they milked that shot you can look it up the in mm -hmm. fact the second blue marble shot when it came out was uh supposedly taken by this satellite that we never even heard of it was almost exactly a million miles away and then they had the moon trend now they're they're taking shots as fast as they can but they're all terrible Mm. They're just they're just ridiculously awful. Anyway, sir, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, so so uh, were there are there any other um arguments that you've heard to uh, besides that for talk? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the sticks the, the sticks and shadows argument, sure. Uh, but that one is a little more cerebral for most people. Your average person doesn't do a lot of three dimensional thinking, mm. and um, that's the thinking from oh boy, or that that experiment Eratosthenes. Good, I pronounced it right. Eratosthenes. Uh, that's the sticks and shadows argument, which says that if you have two sticks in two different locations and an object, a light source in the sky, the shadows are going to be different tracking on a certain thing. And so I'm going, yeah, but even then you're going to have a problem in that because light is relative, meaning, yeah, it works if you have an object that is hundreds of thousands of miles wide and 93 million miles away, or if it's really close and really small. It works the exact same way. And so we say, look, you know, the shadow is, you know, if, if the light source is only 50 miles wide, you know, the sun, and it's really, really close, like several thousand miles away, the shadows yeah. actually work out the same, the same way. And they know this. And yeah. then their argument is, well, we know the sun is 93 million miles away. I go, why? Because the United States military told you? Mm. Those guys? The same guys that told you we went to the moon? Those guys? Because that moon footage has been criticized way before the internet. It was criticized yeah. back in the um, in the 80s. In fact, it was criticized almost right after they got back because it's aged horribly. The production techniques they used, and I could send you a single image, and I could say, find me, I could find more things wrong with it than you could find right. Mm. Anyway, oh, so, wow. sorry. so those are the three big ones. Images, um, uh, what was the second one? Uh, sticks, uh, and sh well, sticks and Shadows, <laughs> and... Uh, boats going over the horizon. Those are the big yeah, ones. Those are the big ones. Uh, are those the ones that uh, that uh, when you had uh, started your uh, your YouTube channel, you were trying to find answers for, um, or did those come later? Those came later. Um, when I was when I was doing it, it was it was much more simple process. I didn't use any math. Mag I didn't even know what the curvature of the Earth was when when I first started this. I didn't tell people to go to the beach and start zooming in cameras on boats and lighthouses and buildings. Uh, it was the exact opposite. When I was looking, I was just kind of looking, uh, I was trying to connect the dots. So I was, when I was looking at it, I, I took it from a, a much broader stroke, which was, okay, let's say I built the world, right? Not to say I'm putting myself in God's shoes right, for a right, second, right, right. but I, but I kind of was, I was going, let's say I pretended to be God. How would I build this place? And what would I do? You know, saying he, that, you know, because people say, uh, often criticize and they say, well, you're saying that God's lazy and he, he wouldn't build an entire solar system in a galaxy. I'm going, no, no, no. God would be very, very efficient. God's not going to waste energy if he doesn't have to. And so if God can create a, a, a place that gives the impression of a galaxy, remember, we were the ones that said, you know, God, the I, not to get into scripture too much, but you know, lights in the sky, right? You know, signs and wonders, mm. uh, a light to, to light up the day, you know, and then a, a mm. lesser light to the night and so on and so on. But if, where was I going with this? Completely lost my train of thought. The, uh, if, if it's, if the, if the illusion and some people say it's a deception, I, I call it a test. If that's what people believe, then that's what it is you know the average person we there's a, a again a line from the truman show which i think was in the movie which was we believe the world that is presented to us 
Mm. Simple. We believe what authority tells us about a lot of things. I mean, mm. take your pick. I mean, there's a lot of people that believe absolutely that mainstream news is what it is for various reasons. Um, a woman from Fox News, she was criticizing the Flat Earth the last year, and her line was beautiful because she was talking about the moon program. And she says, I believe in the, in the Apollo program because I'm a patriot. I thought that was very interesting. I go, wow, that's a slippery slope. So what you're saying is if the government says it's true, you, to be a good citizen, have to believe that. Mm. It's like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you have a personal state, you know, it's like, no, you have to, you're a patriot, you know, believe what the government tells you. I'm going, yeah, but no. <laughs> Come on, you know, governments, we, you know, you look up crook, the word crooked, and it is almost always tied to, to crooked politician. But, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Hey, did you, um, I, I don't know if you're, if you're, uh, um, uh, familiar with the Babylon B. Have you, are you familiar with that? Babylon 5? No, Babylon B. I know Babylon 5, but Babylon B. It's a, uh, it's kind of a, um, kind of a satirical, uh, magazine or satirical kind of they they post on Facebook all the time. Right. And, uh, one of their articles was um, um, they uh, one of their headlines read um, Fox News uh, will cut to a bald eagle with a flag in the background wearing a make make America great again hat like a screeching eagle. So oh, nice, not- nice, <laughs> nice. Oh man, it was it was pretty funny. That is funny. <laughs> had me had me laughing for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what other um, projects are you are you working on currently? Currently, uh, well, there's other documentaries in the works, uh, obviously, and I'm, I'm not going to disclose too much about what's going on because I'm just kind of rolling it with it. I mean, there's lots of there's been a lot of a lot of producers that have been swimming around this thing since 2015, but producers come and go and until they pull the trigger, they have it. I mean, honestly, the, the people that did this particular documentary, they didn't seem any different from anybody else. Uh, they just one day it's like, yeah, we're flying up. It's like, well, okay, let's do this. Um, this year seems to be for me uh, the the focus on conferences, which is weird, um, and not just. And the documentary did help in that regards, but uh, like for example, we just did a, a flat Earth conference in L.A. The next one is in New Zealand. I'm looking at the list, followed by Calgary, uh, Canada, up in Alberta. Right after that. And then I think we've got the summer off mostly. And then we fight, we get right back into it. There is a UK conference in September. There's one in Mount Shasta in September. There's one in Amsterdam at the very end of September. And of course the big American conference, which is in Dallas in November. And then literally this morning, I got a thing from, there's not even a flat earth conference. It's like a, just a conspiracy conference in general in um, Sweden. They asked me to come, and and it's almost almost exactly the same dates between uh, the UK conference, and so we're trying to figure out since they're so close to each other, mm-hmm. maybe I could get over there. But yeah, that's that's the big thing that I'm focusing on this year. Is apparently again, I'm just kind of rolling with it. God, God has decided. Okay, oh hang on, Patricia's writing. She says I tried to join. I'm the only one there. No, 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 no. <laughs> Use the link above. If she wants to, perhaps I can send her. Uh, I can send her the one. That she, you could send her the new one if you want. She should see it. No, no, let's let her sweat it out a little bit. She's the one who's late. <laughs> that's what happens when you don't show up on time. That's right. You don't show up on time. <laughs> You're in a car. Uh, she might. She might be here in like two seconds. We'll see. She doesn't know. Also, doesn't know it's video. I haven't told her, but whatever. Uh, so there she is. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Hello. I'm very sorry for being late. Oh, no problem. Miss Miss Steer. That's, That's all right. We were just wrapping up. Good night, everybody. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Anyway, so so yeah, those those are the projects. No, it's perfect timing because I just said yeah that that's what I'm working on this year, and uh, you know I've got my my speeches pretty. I'm I'm ironing out just a few little things for the speeches, trying to tailor them for each city. But yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Excellent. Well, uh, this is uh, who just joined us right now is uh, the uh, uh, an irrefutable, unique Patricia Steer. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me with you. Well, thank you for uh, for being a part of, uh, of, of the show. So I, I, I appreciate that. Um, I was uh, I was going through uh, with uh, Mark Sargent about um, just his origin and uh, coming to Flat Earth as well. And uh, we were talking about behind the curve and 
how you uh, participated too in that particular um, that documentary. Um, so, um, how did you start become? Uh, how did you start to become interested in flat Earth? I was looking at a lot of other things on YouTube. People call them conspiracies, uh, truth topics, and one thing led to another, and I found myself looking at two. Uh, projects by a guy named Bart Sibrell. One is called Astronauts Gone Wild, and another is called Something Funny Happened on the Way to the Moon. And they brought about some very good questions about the validity of the moon landing. And so I did lots of YouTube and uh, you know blog searching on that, and then finally came to the conclusion that we never went to the moon. And after that, back on YouTube, I found many suggested videos. Mm -hmm. followed up on those. And then I found one that was especially intriguing because it was called Flat Earth Clues. And it was by Mark Sargent. And this was in uh, March of 2015. And he had a few clues out, but not the, the whole compliment yet. And um, I watched the ones that were out and waited with bated breath for others. And pretty much um, at that point, a lot of things started making more sense to me about the world that we live in and how it always felt a bit wrong and off to me. Mm. I watched lots of other videos by other people. I even watched Flat Earth debunking videos. I didn't want it to be true because I didn't want to be among the, quote, crazy Flat mm -hmm. Earther group. But um, I wound up there because there's no way I could deny the truth of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Mark had uh, had mentioned too um, that uh, most of the people who come to Flat Earth um, are are try to debunk Flat Earth, and then right. they end up going that well, you know, there's no way that this can be refuted, um, and they end up just embracing that. Um, I had a uh, um, um, let's see here. Uh, I wanted to kind of oh, so I had asked him some common arguments um, against Flat Earth. Um, what are some common arguments that you've heard um, against Flat Earth and the, um, the counter arguments to those? Some of these might be ones Mark's already mentioned, okay. but people say that um, I'll just I'm not going to put these in any particular order. OK, um, people flew on the Concorde and they saw the curve of the Earth. Mm. Well, there's no pictures of that. You can fly on a regular airplane and look out and see the curvature of the Earth. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. That's been debunked. You mm -hmm. can put a straight edge or a book or something up to the up to the horizon as you're as you're taking off and looking, and you'll see that it's that it's level. Mm -hmm. um, NASA. Anything about NASA? NASA's gone to the moon. NASA's in space. The International Space Station and any other space agency. They'll say that there's pictures of the curved Earth, mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. Those are the ones that people generally throw at me. Uh, sometimes people will say things like there are some uh, reflectors that NASA astronauts during the Apollo mission left on the moon and you can go to a special building and use a special computer and get a ping back after shooting lasers at the moon. But if you look deeply into that, you'll find that people shot lasers at the moon before man quote walked on the moon so mm -hmm. whatever the moon is it happens to ping back with a laser it has nothing to do with any uh, retro reflectors left on it i don't no. believe any were because i don't uh, believe we went to the moon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very cool so uh, have you uh gotten lots of traffic now that you've been a part of this documentary now um um um, has it increased? Has your traffic increased on YouTube as well? As well, Mark? it came out on Amazon Prime and on iTunes, and um, I didn't really notice more people watching any of my videos on the Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes channel, or mm -hmm. you know, any increase in subscribers really. And uh, it took Netflix to make the big splash. Mm -hmm. When we first did the documentary, the people who were making it probably had dreams of it being in movie theaters all across the world. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what they really thought they might do is get it into a few film festivals. There was no, you know, promises or, you know, anything that of where it would end up. We just did it in good faith, being that we wanted to represent the people in Flat Earth. Not as much the concept, but that we are real people, normal people. We could be anybody living next door to you. So anyway, we did it. And Netflix is the thing that got most of the people to watch it. And then I noticed an uptick in my subscriber count and in the views on my videos, comments on videos, as well as even my Instagram. 
uh, has an increase, even if there's hardly anything on, I don't use it enough. My Twitter has taken off a bit and my Facebook friend requests, I have, I've had the maximum at 5,000 for a couple of years now, but I've got, I believe at this point, 600 waiting to be approved. And that happened right after Netflix. Now, I don't know if these new subscribers and viewers and people trying to befriend me and followers are due to they're interested in flat earth or they're interested in hate watching or hate friending me because they hate flat earth. I have no idea. There's no way for me to tell, but I have accepted a few of those people as Facebook friends and they haven't gone on a rampage blasting me. They've just said, I enjoyed you on there. You've got me thinking and, and that sort of thing. So I think that the documentary, although it wasn't a completely fair portrayal of, uh, this, the science behind Flat Earth, we all contributed to that, but that was primarily left on the cutting room floor. It has sparked interest in Flat Earth. And in the end, I think that will do the Flat Earth community a lot of good because there's people out there who've not been watching YouTube videos. They don't know anything about Flat Earth. Right, right. They watch Netflix, which they probably do. They'll, they'll watch the documentary and at the very least, they'll think, there must be something to this flat earth thing. I don't know what it is, but the people interviewed, at least most of them, seem fairly normal. They're not dumb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And 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 also to you, you had mentioned a little bit about um, you thought that there may have been some sort of a bias to it uh, with the documentary. I talked to Mark about that, and he had, he had mentioned uh, that it was an overall good one, but there were some. There were some, uh, some. You said some behind the pot shots uh, <laughs> yeah. taken at him. Did you, did you, did you get that same type of vibe too? Uh, yeah, I think that all of the main people who were in it had little shots taken at them, and parts of things they said were cut a certain way. Um, they didn't put words in our mouth or anything like that. It wasn't diabolical, uh -huh. but when it all comes down to it, the filmmaker and the other two people who were part of the the the, the crew, they believe we live on a globe. That's their perspective. And that's the perspective they came at it with. Although they told us it would be a fair and balanced look at Flat Earth, it's definitely not. It's not a documentary even in a way, although we all refer to it as that because that's what the producers call it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is more of an opinion piece that a globe believer, which is just generally any normal person, would have on Flat Earth and Flat Earthers. So it's an opinion piece less of a documentary. It's not fair and balanced, but I hate the expression. It is what it is, but it is what it is. And those in the flat earth community are making the best of the increased exposure that we've got to try to get the word out to new people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, man, I wanted to ask you a question, but I could not, I, I, I forgot my question, <laughs> man. It was a beautiful well, film. I'll say that. It was beautifully filmed and beautifully done, very engaging, and it's a fun ride. So even for people who just think Flat Earth is insane and they'll never look into the science behind it, mm -hmm. they, they'll enjoy the film. Oh, now I remember. Okay. So either either one of you, Mark or Patricia, um, you talked about um, there are people who are basically flat earth hate haters, right? Uh, they come on and, and kind of do their own thing. Have you have people have had people actually attacked you um, due to your position um, or have you been have, have you seen a little bit more friendly engagement? We'll start with Mark. Uh, I've had three hospital visits so far. Um two contusions and uh, uh, multiple fractures. No, I'm totally well, making uh, that And up. the no, sarin no. gas attack. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And a gas, yeah. sarin gas attack. <laughs> no, no, nobody. No. It's really interesting. Nobody, you know, considering we're talking about a, a massive conspiracy, nobody has done anything to me or really to anybody else in the community. I'm not going to necessarily speak for Patricia on, on some stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has been, um, uh, sorry, hang on, I got it close this phone thing down for a second the uh we've had hundreds of regional meetups and conferences in different countries and nothing not a single incident of of any note so have do i the only hate i get is in the comments section of youtube mm. and everything else i mean 99 percent of my emails are are pro or just inquisitive and the phone calls almost even more than 99 percent of the phone calls are are inquisitive Anyway, uh, Patricia, take over. I gotta, I gotta answer this call. Okay. Well, when it comes to, um, you know, hate comments, negative comments in YouTube videos, I mean, those happen on 
anybody's YouTube channel. Right. They don't have to be flat earthers. Mm -hmm. You could actually have a channel showing newborn babies learning to walk or a channel showing butterflies flitting about or cute puppies or, or, or cute dogs or anything wholesome. And somebody will write, you're a moron or a retard underneath in the comment section. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a loser, you're dumb, or et cetera. That's just how YouTube is. That's how social media is. You know, the keyboard warrior term. There's so many people with so many different, um, you know, ability, uh, so many different problems in their own life. And what they do when they're angry they don't even know they're doing it, but they take it out on others. Before the internet, I don't know what people did. Uh, did they, uh, you know, uh, get angry at their wife or husband or, you know, something, mm -hmm. probably some way to release that anger that they have inside themselves because their life's not fulfilling. But mm -hmm. now they've got social media and social media allows people to, in the privacy of their home, not have their real name showing or their face. And to say whatever they want. And so those hate comments are, are there and were there prior to Behind the Curve, the, the documentary opinion piece, and behind its release on Netflix or Amazon Prime or iTunes or before even Flat Earth got going, the, the, the resurgence of it in 2015, they'll always be there. But sometimes a person who hates the idea of flat earth and believes everybody who's interested in it is stupid will turn. They'll turn because something makes them investigate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once you really, really deeply investigate it, and that doesn't mean watching one debunking video or hearing your friend say, well, my dad's dad helped build the challenger. <laughs> that's not researching it. Um, that's, you know, we all know what that is. Uh, <laughs> there are people who will research deeply who used to hate flat earth and now they're on board. One mm -hmm. thing they don't do is ever apologize to those they've said bad comments to though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find that interesting. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Uh, what, what, what is fascinating um, is to um, is when people do that, when they kind of smear and stuff like that, a couple of things is one is they don't, they haven't really, and they don't really know much about the ideas. They just kind of hear it and, and kind of get upset about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, because the challenges, things that they've known, things that they've understood. Right. Um, um, but in another, in another sense is it, 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 you know, really insulting a person doesn't really do much good, you know, because you're not really engaging the ideas. You know what I'm saying? Um, 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 it's just a shame that people do that. Um, even, even with, you know, baby videos and cat videos and, um, it's, it's a shame that people do that. Um, so hey, hey, re real quick, sorry, I hate to do this to you. I, I do have to run and do something. Is it okay? If Patricia finishes off the the interview with you. Oh yeah, man. She can, is that okay, Patricia? Would you I'd mind love to. Me? Okay. <laughs> I, I knew you would. So mm -hmm. I can now talk badly about him when he's <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> anyway, chance. thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure speaking with you and hopefully we can in the future. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. No worries. Talk soon. All right. Bye. -bye. bye. Miss Patricia. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, I, I had asked, uh, uh, Mr. Sergeant this, but I'll, I'll also ask this too. Are there, uh, many upcoming projects that you're working on too, um, in regards to this, uh, uh, to this topic? Well, there are conferences and conventions coming up, uh, that I'm attending. There's many that I'm not attending because there's just too darn many, mm -hmm. but, uh, New Zealand is coming up in April of 2019 and, uh, also Amsterdam follows. I'm going to both of those. And I'm also going to, uh, one in the fall here in the United States. And I live in Houston, Texas, but I'm going to the one in Dallas, Texas. Uh -huh. That's the Flat Earth International Conference. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's always meetups and that sort of thing. Plus, I do frequent shows on my YouTube channel, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, and that will continue. And I'm in support of those who are going to conferences that I'm not attending. And I'll be, you know, perhaps interviewing them or, you know, sharing their videos as they are on the scene doing their thing. Now, I'm curious, though, you say you have a, a show called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. What are the other hot potatoes? All sorts of other subjects that people find too hot to handle. Flat mm -hmm. Earth is one such topic. Mm -hmm. It's one of those topics that if you brought it up at the dinner table, <laughs> your uncle might say, get out of here. Mm -hmm. And your aunt might say, 
you know you learned science better than that. And everyone will kind of pass this hot potato around and right. not want to talk about it because either they don't know anything about it or they've just already prejudged it as being stupid. Mm -hmm. And there's all sorts of other hot potato issues in society that don't really have anything to do with flat earth at all, but different things. I mean, anybody who's looked at any sort of, quote, conspiracy issues, unquote, will, will know. I mean, people talk mm -hmm. about JFK. People mm -hmm. talk about all of these vaccines and et cetera. So mm -hmm. I talk to people who have um, experience in many different hot potato areas. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So uh, what are um, when you are not studying uh, flat earth and not enga engaging in this particular topic, what other hobbies do you have that are you like to do? I think I was looking on um, your YouTube channel and it looks like you have a, a, a guitar in the background. Um, do you, do you play any instruments at all? You know, I learned to play piano because my mother drilled it into me when I was young and then I pretty much lost touch with playing piano mm -hmm. as I got older. And I decided in 2015 as a quote bucket list thing that I would learn to play guitar. So I bought a really pretty guitar. It's a uh, union Jack style. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And it's a Sheraton Epiphone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, right after I got the guitar for my birthday, which is in February, I found Flat Earth Clues in March of 2015. Oh, wow. And that extra time that I was expecting to devote to guitar lessons just was ate up with this brand new pursuit of mine. So no, I don't play guitar. I didn't get rid of the guitar. I have it hanging behind me in the room mm -hmm. where I am. And uh, people might consider me to be a poser, but I've openly told everyone that, no, I don't know how to play the guitar. It's a piece of art now. But I do love music. That guitar is uh, one that was used by the band Oasis. So I, oh, had, wow. I, I it's not the actual one, uh -huh. but that's the style of this particular one. Yeah. But I, I like uh, I liked Brit pop a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I liked what they used to call new wave back in the day, back mm -hmm. in the uh, late seventies and early eighties. Um, so I do like music. I do attend live music shows of bands that I like, not just any show. I'm super selective about that. I like classical music as well, and I love decorating and art and uh, style and design girly things. And um, I have three cats. So, uh, you know, that and just doing things in my area. I'm going to an art museum tomorrow. So I keep myself busy with lots of different things. Very cool. Very cool. And you and you have uh, somewhat of a of a famous background, right? Uh, your your um, family was very musical, wasn't it? Yes, my father owned a radio station, but his father owned it before he did. And uh, anybody who's watched my channel might know this story, but in the room, which is basically an office I made into a studio where I record my YouTube shows, behind me are the albums by the Smiths, which that was a very important band to me when I was in high school uh, because I'm vegan. And there was a song called Meat is Murder that got me to be vegetarian at a very young age. I didn't know there was such a thing as vegan. And for those who don't even know the difference, vegetarians still can eat eggs and dairy, mm -hmm. and sometimes fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, vegan is abstaining from all animal products, whether eating them or putting them on your face uh, mm -hmm. or wearing, you know, leather and suede. So I'm mm -hmm. vegan. But uh, back a long time ago when the Meat is Murder album truly affected me and I looked into animals and what really happens to them, why slaughterhouses don't have, uh, you know, glass walls, uh, mm -hmm. it, it made me change my life. And the band, the Smiths and the singer Morrissey, were very important to me. Therefore, I have the the framed, the main framed uh, Smiths albums behind me. But also, the jukebox behind me is a Wurlitzer mm -hmm. 791050, and that was my father's in his radio station, WKMI in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It was an AM radio station, AM 1360. That was his father's before that. But my dad got it in 79 and had it in the radio station lobby when I was young, when I was growing up, when I'd go visit my dad at work. There was that jukebox and I could go play a song if I wanted. It was really nice. And it was kept in great condition in the station, in the lobby. It wasn't abused. A lot of older jukeboxes do get wear and tear, but this was treated like a prized treasure. And when my father sold that station, he took the jukebox with him and kept it at his home. And when my parents both died, I inherited it. So uh, the radio station background that I had was wonderful because I, I already had a ability to communicate that I inherited just from my background, my parents, just that's how they were. But um, being able to 
encapsulate ideas quickly is what you learn when you're a disc jockey. Not that mm -hmm. I'm very quick answering this question, mind you, <laughs> but I'm not um, shy or reticent about speaking publicly. And I think being a DJ at an AM station in the 80s, when I was pretty young and very green, not even knowing what I was doing, did help me be able to think on my feet. So yeah, I have a radio background and went on from that Kalamazoo, Michigan station to work on my own away from my family in uh, Northern California for quite a long time and a very short period of time in New Orleans, Louisiana, right before Hurricane Katrina hit. Oh, wow. Okay. Very, very, very interesting. And 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 I can see the picture of the Wurlitzer in the background with your picture. I've actually seen some of your videos too. It it is it is a beauty. It sure. is lovely. I love it. You have to um, play it a lot. I mm -hmm. have uh, in order to keep it running smoothly. It's, it's one of those things. You think something old that the 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 less you play it, the better condition it would be. Well, I've heard mm -hmm. the opposite with this. You continually need to play it, which makes sense. Don't they say, um, use it or lose it, even yeah. with our bodies. If you don't stretch, then you're going to, you know, not be as limber. So yeah, with the, mm -hmm. with the jukebox, you have to change the um, bulbs quite a lot. I leave it plugged in all the time. So it looks beautiful and bright and the bulbs <laughs> burn out. And I, uh, when I got it from Michigan and brought it to where I live in Houston, after my parents had died, I had to have it specially packed and transported. And I replaced all the records that were in it, which were just a bunch of records I hated. <laughs> <laughs> And replace them with a lot of 80s music, things I like that were, you know, seminal touchstone type of songs for me. And there are all 45s in there. So Very cool. There's 50 of them. I love it. Very cool. That is excellent. That is excellent. So from just, uh, uh, it seems like from just your experience and some of the things that uh, you were able to to do as a, uh, as a young girl and stuff like that, um, how does that kind of pour into um, um, your pursuit of truth regarding um, flat earth and, and some of the things that you're working on? Well, in the world of conspiracy, any sort of truth-seeking topic, there aren't a lot of women. There are some, but there aren't a lot. And when I got into flat earth, there certainly were not. Now there are quite a few. And I'm not saying I'm a trendsetter or anything like that, or I'm a, I'm an OG. <laughs> <laughs> but what I am saying is that by having a female presence and a feminine female pre presence, I hope that it will encourage other women, and I do think it has, to enter into exploring flat earth and perhaps themselves starting channels and speaking their truth about the topic when before it was a little harder because if it's a male dominated, it's not an industry, but let's just say an industry, um, it can be a bit off putting for women because you will come into something where people oftentimes won't act their best selves. Some of the men and they'll judge the woman on how she looks as opposed to what she's saying. And so a lot of women saw me take all sorts of hits when I first started in 2015, and they still continue today, although they're lessening, for being ugly or being stupid, both of which I am not, but it would be coming from men who were angry, I would imagine, because my channel was a little more popular than theirs. Mm. But that doesn't mean that they had bad content or were bad people. But it's just like I was saying before, the kind of people who make bad comments on videos, they are undergoing something in their private life. You'll never know. Mm -hmm. and that's why I forgive everybody. They've, they've got something going on that I can't help. So I'll never be angry at them. And a lot of women saw me, you know, get a take a bashing and mm -hmm. said, I'm not going in there with Flat Earth because it's dangerous in there. So I hope that I'm able to be a role model in a way where when I'm attacked, I never lash out, I never strike back, I never use profanity, I maintain dignity and composure, I'm always a lady. And people have grown to respect that approach. And I think it makes women feel safer. You can ride out the controversy and craziness and come out the other side smelling like a rose. Mm -hmm. If you get down in the dirt and start fighting, well, that's what they want you to do. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why I never do. And I think a lot of women have been helped by seeing a, a strong female role model. There are so many women in Flat Earth, and some of them are role models to me as well. Mm -hmm. now. 
Now you had said you said not just a woman, but a feminine woman. What what did you mean by that? Well, like I was saying, it, the conspiracy world is kind of dark and mm. a little bit weird and a little bit off the beaten path. Mm. And a lot of women aren't interested in going down that path. Mm. And I am not just a woman going down that path, but I make sure to look well-groomed. I've got lip gloss on, wear a pretty outfit, mm -hmm. have my hair done nicely. So mm -hmm. I'm presenting a very um, mainstream friendly image. I see. That's actually how I am anyway, before Flat Earth ever came along. But it, a lot of people when I started weren't even using cameras on when they were doing Flat Earth videos. In fact, Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues didn't show him at all. Mm -hmm. Just his voice over some pictures. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not using my camera to speak with you now because I'm having a weird bandwidth issue at my house, but <laughs> I always have my camera on. Yeah. And I think just having my camera on and looking like a normal, well-groomed, halfway intelligent, she's got it together kind of person lends some credence to the idea. Although we all would hope we're above judging a book by its cover, we all judge. And if... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you say you don't judge, you're lying. Mm -hmm. We're hardwired to look at things and judge. It's one of the reasons we've got eyes. And I don't mean using judgment against people, right, but right. We, we go to the grocery store and want to buy fruit. We're going to pick up an apple and judge whether or not it's got spots on it and put the one with the spots back and get the one that looks better. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. by presenting a nice image, I am hoping I make it a friendlier world for those who are interested in looking at these these truths and flat earth is not a happy go lucky subject. When you look underneath, it's like a beautiful log in the forest. Mm -hmm. It's right there. And there's a blue sky and beautiful trees and a lovely breeze. And you can, you know, hear some birds tweeting, but if you turn the log over, there's white worms squirming all around. That's how flat earth is because we've been lied to flat earthers believe on a huge level, hiding where we live that much of a lie mm -hmm. and appropriating or misappropriating money when it could go to help humans for some mis mystery fake space program. And all of that manipulation is ugly. Like what's under that, under that, that, that tree stump or that log in the forest. And in order to get people to see the ugly thing, I'm hoping that my presence as a feminine woman is, making it an easier thing to swallow because I'm a sane looking person talking about this insane world. And that will help other sane looking people say, you know what? She's not wearing a tinfoil hat and drooling, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe I should figure out what she's talking about and look at some of these people that she's interviewing. Mm -hmm. So, so you had, um, you had mentioned, um, 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 oh. So you keep doing this to me, Patricia. I keep forgetting my questions. <laughs> Is it me? <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. Let me let me let me let me think for a second because I, I had I had one on the tip of my tongue, and then it just left, just like that. Uh, maybe I'll maybe it'll come back. Um, so from where you from where you observe things um, um, right now concerning this particular uh, this particular theory, this movement. Um, um, where, uh, where do you see, oh, oh, okay. Before I get to that question, I just remembered. Okay. I just remembered it. Cool. So, um, um, you would mention that, um, from the perspective of, <clears throat> excuse me, a flat earther, the, 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 the perspective that one has been lied to. Uh, specifically by NASA, right, and 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 the and just the the the, the space program and and some of the things like that. What would be, um, for instance, you know, let's say fifty years down the line, um, flat Earth is now the prevailing um, essentially doctrine, right? What would be the implications of that? So, um, no more space program, no more. What would what would be the end result, the end game of that? You know, I, I cannot predict how the world would change. I look more toward things that can be done short term and what happens long term will be determined by the people who wake up mm -hmm. and how many are amassed. Mm -hmm. 
So what can be done short term is gathering more people together who look at the topic and find it valid. Will will there be rioting in the streets? Will there be, you know, uh, governmental buildings torn down brick by brick? Will there be people sued? Will there, will, will there be people arrested? I mean, I hope there won't be anything really horrible happening that will endanger innocent parties. Mm. And I don't believe in any sort of corporal punishment anyway. But there are people responsible for keeping the lie going, and I would hope they would be brought to justice. However, those people just inherited the lie from those before them, and those before them are probably dead. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that when the anger dies down, if indeed this comes to pass that we all become flat earthers, that we rebuild a society where there is more honesty about the world we live in, because there are great mysteries. The great mysteries are not getting on a rocket and flying to Pluto or setting up a colony on Mars, because those are just lights in the sky. They're not terra firma you can land on. Mm -hmm. Instead of building castles in the sky, which pretty much means fairy tales we can never live out, we could focus our time and our money on solving problems here. And also, if we discover the earth is flat as a mass, as a group of society, not just the flat earthers we've got now, people may come to a better understanding that this world is not an accident caused by a big bang where nothing exploded. Yes, nothing exploded and became everything. That when you look in your baby's eyes or when I look in my pet cat's eyes, there's something there that was created. It didn't just happen randomly, that we each are not due to a random event, that we are all important, and that when we worship God, the creator, whatever your religion is, we, we should be able to understand that we shouldn't fight each other because there's my God and then your God's fake sort of attitude we all have. Something created this place, and whatever that thing is, if a person decides to call it God, Jesus, Allah, whatever it may be, I would wish we could say, that's okay. That's fine. And for those who don't want to believe in a deity or want to worship, that that's fine too. Mm. But I would hope they would find that they are of value. They're not just random circumstantial stardust that created a man or a woman or a baby or an animal and everything inside us, how it works so perfectly. Even if the world is a messed up place, we all can agree upon. Everything is also incredibly beautiful. And maybe we could focus on, fo on the beauty and also making the beauty work better. Mm. We could work together. So this this is more see now now what you're what you're describing more when when you're talking about flat earth this is an existential issue. Yes. Right. It right. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. um I think many people are in an existential crisis mm -hmm. and they've given us fake space so we can focus our energies there for a new utopia that we'll build when we colonize Mars, mm -hmm. Elon Musk says, <laughs> when we can't even handle stuff here. Mm. At home. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know how much money, or you can look up how much money NASA gets, and then there's the other space programs throughout the world, and then you still drive by and see homeless people on the street. Mm -hmm. What's up with that? Everyone's got to ask themselves that. Mm -hmm. Is it because this place is so bad we need to escape and go somewhere else? Well, if we never learned how to solve a homeless problem here on Earth, Let's say there was a Mars you could colonize. You know there'll be homeless people there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if mm -hmm. there's race issues here, we'll have them there too. Now, like I said, I don't believe we can go to Mars or there is really a Mars you can land on. And I actually also don't believe there's race issues. I believe that's manipulated mm -hmm. by the media and government to keep us always at war. And I don't mean just mm -hmm. race issues. Uh -huh. Uh, issues between men and women, uh, just everyone asking for rights. We were all born with the rights. 
if we only could realize that we are special and we are equal and we all deserve respect. And flat earth is, it's hard to explain to somebody who's not knee deep in the whole flat earth awakening. It's, that's part of it. It's not just, oh, the land is flat and NASA lied. Let's point out a reflection in a helmet and show you how NASA lied. There's something much deeper to this. And it comes down to all of us having value that we were born with that's mm -hmm. been crushed from us. And we are hoping to get enough people together to take it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so speaking about this, just to kind of summarize what you're saying, um, is, is, is flat earth, um, um, is a movement really that, that, that is, is, is seeking, um, to understand the truth so that by extension, we can understand the intrinsic value of mankind and, and creation. Perfectly in a much shorter time than I did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just used, I just took all those words and kind of, and, and, and all these words and, 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 and kind of jumbled them together and kind of, so you kind of, you helped me in that. So I mm -hmm. appreciate it. But, but, um, but uh, that's, that's really, really um, important because I, you know, um, I think all of us in, in, in one way or another, are trying to search for significance mm -hmm. and and you know um um and and trying to you know you know most people i i don't know if you were getting this vibe when you were doing the documentary but but um most people think that you know these are just you know numbers and 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 and, and theories and and planes and you know and and space and stuff like that but you're really you're really talking about the the deep the deep core of who we are as human beings and that uh uh from your estimation flat earth is is opens up the door um for that for that reality you know um um, is it, does that make sense? Yes, it certainly does. Yeah, and yeah. even behind the curve, I talked a lot about that, the more mm -hmm. philosophical matters, but that was pretty much left on the cutting room floor, except for a, a few little segments that they used of me, but they only used the ones of me that made it look like I was a bit kooky. Mm -hmm. uh, we all who were in it were painted as a certain type of character. I was the crazy cat lady who might be on the verge of discovering that her flat earth conspiracy is just as wacky as all the conspiracies against her. But mm -hmm. no, I am i wasn't on the verge of ever thinking that. I am fully committed to flat earth, but that's the character they, they painted me as. Although I do love cats, but um, mm -hmm. I'm not crazy. But everyone who was in it was painted a, a certain way, an exaggeration of who they are. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they needed to do that in order to make a film. There has to be a protagonist, you know, there has to be, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I, I get what the filmmakers did in Behind the Curve. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't like that the last, uh, for those who saw the documentary, I hate calling it that. I, I still believe it's an opinion piece, but mm -hmm. not my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> not anyone's in it, but mm -hmm. still the opinion of the filmmaker. Um, and like I said, who told us it was going to be fair and balanced, and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. There weren't any digs in behind the curve at those who believe in the globe, oh, mm. flat earthers, and that's mm. where right there you can decide that it was not a not a full documentary that was uh, impartial. But mm. at the very last scene during uh, Jaron Campanella's experiment, they uh, only left in the middle of the experiment and cut when he said interesting. Mm -hmm. So it, because they had a point of view, the filmmakers that they wanted to show mm -hmm. so anything. And we didn't know what that was until we saw the film and said, Oh, mm -hmm. you know, um, we didn't get shown parts of it before it was put together. We didn't get to have an opinion on, can we use this part of you? Can we not use this part of you? I mean, mm -hmm. It was put mm -hmm. together in the theater when we saw it. I mean, I went to the premiere. Okay. And so, you know, it, none of us really liked what they did. But it was a slice of life in some way of the of a portion of the flat Earth community in 2017, uh, and so I did enjoy seeing my friends 
in the film and then all the other people who maybe didn't speak, but who are also my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was really nice to see. And so it will be something that through the years I'll, I'll want to look back at again and grit my teeth at the parts <laughs> were not quite right. Mm -hmm. So uh, from your estimation, one, one, one kind of final question here. From your estimation, where do you see uh, the movement going? Uh, so if you can look, uh, you know, one year, I, I know you're, you kind of look in short bursts, but, um, um, but indulge me for a second, three years down the line, five years down the line. Is this uh, one of those, uh, where do you see yourself in the company in five years? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the correct answer to this, that to the boss interviewing is mm -hmm. I'll have your seat, sir or ma'am. <laughs> You'll be out of here and I'll be the boss. <laughs> Anyway, and then you'll never get the job. <laughs> but um, where do I see Flat Earth in the next few years long term? I just see growth. Mm -hmm. It's growing. I don't think NASA will ever come out and say, okay, hands up. We've been lying. I don't think the government's going to go on mainstream TV and say, uh, sorry, we lied to you guys. We have our reasons, but the Earth is really flat, not a globe. I don't see any of those things happening. I don't see mainstream newspapers pointing out that flat earthers have some really good points. I don't see there being any documentaries, unless flat earthers produce them, that will come out and show the true uh, demonstrations that we have put together in their entirety that show the true shape of our world. They can't really because, I mean, think of it this way. Flat earthers believe there are not satellites orbiting in space. Now, we believe maybe they have some kind of devices on balloons. I know that sounds crazy, but mm -hmm. people have to look into this. So we don't believe in satellites that are in geocentric orbits. And then, you know, a lot of these companies have satellite TV they offer. So do you think people who have who are broadcasting their programs on satellite TV are going to allow flat earthers to say there are no satellites on their TV? Mm. Of course not. It's built into the system that if you if they did a mainstream television show, one of the sponsors could be, you know, any sort of NASA, JPL. I mean, it just wouldn't get green lighted to do. So flat earthers are going to have to do it themselves. And then we may get a fair shake and we may get more people to look at it who are in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So until then, it's very grassroots. We have people doing street activism, uh, you know, old school style, going out in parks and other areas and speaking to the public and giving them brochures and flyers and talking to them one on one, going on tours. The Globe Lie Tour is one such thing that's uh, in Europe and the UK. And they've made a lot of headway with doing this uh, street activism. Some people do something in the U.S. called flat smacking. It's not <laughs> as violent as it sounds, but it's basically just talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, street activism style, and uh, you know, giving them information that is like a slap in the face, but the person will only feel the sting later when they start looking into it. And it's it's a lingering sting where, where even if they'll brush away the idea that that woman or man talked to me at the park and they kind of sounded smart and maybe what they're saying is true, it's going to stick in their head like that sting is sort of still glowing on their face. It's, it's going to cause them, at least some of them, to say, you know, I, I think I'll go to Google and look into that. And mm -hmm. some of those people will do enough research to become flat earthers as well. So we've got the street activism and, you know, flat smacking going on and that'll continue and there'll be, you know, more conferences and conventions and maybe at some point there'll be something in, in, in film or television that will be done by a flat earther and done right without the bias. Um, but we're going to all keep trying and keep speaking out, keep trying to wake up family members and people in our churches and schools and other organizations. And yes, even talk to mainstream media, I, although they'll get it wrong because every once in a while we, we, we get a gem out there and mm -hmm. people wake up because of that. So flat earthers in the future are going to continue to press on and more people will join our ranks. Sometimes we fight among ourselves, but in yeah. the end, we are all on the same team. Mm -hmm. Mm, very good.
Thank you so much, Patricia, for your time. You and 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 Mark Sargent. I I I, I really um I thank you so much for uh just um allowing me to take up some of your time and, and talk with you um um about this and, and about uh things that are happening um um within you within the world that you're a part of and uh, that you and uh, Mark are a part of and uh um I'm I'm certainly thankful and grateful for um uh the marketplace of ideas. And, uh, and that, uh, um, uh, these things are, these things are taking place. So thank you very thank much you for speaking with me and taking your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, oh, but the pleasure is all mine for real. Um, and, and Mark as well. So thank you for being on the, on the program. Wonderful. And, uh, hopefully the, uh, flat earth truth will be something that some of your listeners and watchers will look into themselves and don't dismiss it. Don't laugh at it. Don't knock it till you tried it. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you so much. This is Dr. Luther Smith um, with uh, the Urban Influence. Again, um, if you like the show, if you like shows like this and other shows that are on there, uh, please, uh, please subscribe or watch and share. And uh, uh, we'll have tons and tons of more interviews and tons of more topics coming your way. So uh, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. And uh, this is Dr. Luther Smith with the Urban Influence. Grace and peace to you guys. All right. Bye-bye.